Lights it up. Starting again, convention mission. We're out in Sacramento and out in Los Angeles. And uh, core scripture, foundational scripture for our ministry is Ephesians 5 11, which have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And as we know today, as I you know, observe, you know, just working within the institution, to be a thug nowadays is very fashionable. Everybody know that? Yeah. You know, you got young boys want to grow up and be gangsters, and you got young girls want to grow up and marry them. How I many know that's a problem? You got anybody heard of the game Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft Auto is a video game, number one game in America. And in this game, you, the player, are the gang member. You, the player, are the killer. You, the player, are the carjacker. Okay? And this is the number one game in America. I remember when I was writing, I wrote a book called Thug Mentality Exposed. Uh, when I was at the uh, institution. I remember I was writing the book. I remember being at a coffee shop out of Sacramento in a very gang-related area. And when I was there, I remember looking across the street and seeing some posters, kind of like how they advertise movies. And it was like Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto. So I remember I went back to the institution and I went on to a lockup unit where I was working. And I started asking some of the inmates, you know, I say, hey, you guys familiar with this game, Grand Theft Auto? And then, you know, and these were like, I remember they were isolated, you know, different gang members in different cases, isolated, like a jail within the jail. And when I mentioned Grand Theft Auto, they just started coming together. They said, oh, they call me Queso. Queso, that game is tight. They said, in that game, you get to have shootouts with the police. He said, you get to go out there and just do drive-bys and, you know, and, and, and killings and carjackings. And, he, and then one of them just caught my attention. He says, awesome, man, you get to go and get women and go off into the cuts. I'm like, get women and going off the cuts. What type of video game is this? They said, yeah, then you handle your business with them and then you kill them. I'm like, you killed them. Now they sell this game at Toys R Us. Now we know that that's a problem when you got games like that being sold at Costco and Toys R Us. But Ephesians 5 11, like I said, says we're supposed to as a church. I mean, no, that's a mandate for all of us to expose this type of darkness. Amen? I'm going to read from you a little passage from that from a young man from the Bay Area. Thank you. A young man from the Bay Area. And his name was Steve. And I remember Steve caught my attention. Uh, you know, he was on my case slow, but you know, we were, as we were talking, I was telling him to give a little bit of background about himself. And he says, uh, he was in there for a first degree murder. And I remember he told me, he said, case slow, I got my gun when I was 10 years old, my first gun when I was 10. I'm like, 10 years old? And he started getting all excited when he started telling me the story. He says, case slow, when I had that gun, I remember just holding it, just thinking about all the power that I now had, that I had this gun. But he said, just after holding it, he said, after a while, it's like, I wasn't satisfied just holding it. He said, I started having imaginations and visions about going out and using it. I started getting excited about it. Hmm. He's talking about 10, 11 years old, he was going throughout the streets out here in the Bay Area, blowing people away for the adrenaline rush. And I remember talking to him, and I said, Steve, at 10, 11 years old, I said, how do you develop that type of mentality at that age? And a lot of times you tell them in a treatment setting, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, right? I said, man, off the record, I want to know how you develop this type of mentality. He's all right, Kate Slow, you want to know? I said, yes. And he said, all right, so the next time we had a program at the institution, he came out. At this time, he's about 19 years old. And he hands me a letter. And this is what it says, real short, but this is what he said. This will kind of lay down the foundation of my talk. I only got about 12 more minutes. He said, I was conditioned with the belief to be a thug was from the attention from all the peers that had respect. I was rejected as a child, so since I believe I need the respect to survive in my neighborhood, I could kill two birds with one stone and get the attention and respect from acting like a thug. Being rowdy, boisterous, disrespectful, and wild was passed on to me from my peers. I believe if I don't beat them, somebody else will, or this is free money, so I'm going to get it. 
It was important for me to, to get over on this system the more I became deep into the mentality as a hustler. Too short. Anybody ever heard of him? E-40. And Little Rick were a couple of main Bay Area rappers that I like because they talked about all types of killing, drug dealing, and how they kicked it by drinking and smoking. They would give me a natural high and get me pumped up with negative adrenaline. And I remember talking to Steve, I said, Steve, I want you to take me to that day that you killed your victim. I said, I want to know everything you did that day. He's like, everything? I said, all right, case load. I woke up. I said, what you do when you woke up? He said, I got lit. You know what that means, right? I said, man, no fruit loops, orange juice, and nothing like that. Just get lit like that, Steve. He's like, oh, case slow, man. It's like, you know, that's a brother's medication right there, man. When you navigate through them streets, you gotta stay on point, man. You get caught being paranoid out there, that's game over. He said, I gotta have my weed. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you do after that, Steve? He says, well, after that case slow, I put on the gangster music. And he started getting real animated. He said, oh, K-Slow. I said, why'd you put on the gangster music, K-Slow? He said, when I put on that gangster music, K-Slow, it's like I go up to a whole nother level. I feel like my enemies is way down here and I'm up here. It's like whatever they're talking about, okay? So if they talking about carjacking, I get carjack. If they talking about pimping, I get pimp. If they talking about killing, I get kill. He said, it's like their words become my words. Their talk becomes my talk and I actually believe the things that they're talking about that I can do that. How many know the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue? Amen. And that's one of the things that the enemy is using along with the music. Because people don't understand the power of music. Joshua 1.8 says we meditate on the word of God day and night. You will be very successful, right? What does music do? Music is a pleasurable way to meditate. And that's what Satan is trying to do. Is trying to put out his message through the airwaves so our young people will start meditating on it. But like you said, I'm just going to go a quick history into the thug culture, the thug history real quick. Now it's Proverbs 4, 7 says, and all thy getting get understanding. Amen? Amen. But a lot of times when I go out onto the yard, you'll be surprised when I start telling these guys about the history of the thug, how many of these people want to come out of the thug culture? How many of them want to come out of the gang culture? When I just give them what? The truth. What does John 8, 32 say? The truth what? Show what? Set you free. So set you free. That's all you need. You don't need all these type of, you know, uh, gimmicks and things like that. You just tell them the truth. A lot of them, I remember the gang coordinator came up to me and said, what are you telling these guys? These guys are asking me to transfer out off units, off to non-gang units. I said, I'm just telling them the truth about the thug. Well, the truth is that, you know, a lot of times when I talk about the word thug, everybody thinks about Tupac, right? They about Al Capone. But when I tell these guys, the word thug actually comes from India, okay? And it came over 700 years ago, there was a tribe in India called the Thuggy tribe. And the Thuggy tribe was about 5,000 of them. And they were made up of Muslims and Hindus. And they worshiped a goddess called Kali. How many of you ever seen the Hindu goddess? And I'm not saying everybody that worshiped this goddess believed the same way the thugs did. But this goddess had eight arms, right? Yeah. And, you know, she was blue, and she had a tongue protruding out of her mouth, real bloody. She had male heads, a lot of times they depict her with male heads around her waist, and she's stepping on a dead body. And she was known as the goddess of death and destruction. And a lot of times, a lot of the dancers now are saying, kill a Kali. You ever hear that? Kill a Kali? K-A-L-I. You know, they spell California, K-A-L-I, but that was the name of the thug goddess. That's why they, that's why they say kill and kill it. So they wanted to appease this goddess, because you know back in pagan times, they wanted to appease the gods and goddesses. Why? Because they believed these gods and goddesses had control over the weather patterns, right? They had control over the harvest, the livestock, and their women being fertile. So they wanted to appease her, right? That's why a lot of times you go to restaurants, you see food being put up before the statue. So thugs was no different. So the thugs said, we gotta appease Kali. Now a box of chocolates and flowers probably wasn't gonna appease this goddess, would it? What do you think she wanted? She wanted some dead bodies. So the thugs who had a little swagger about themselves would go out through the countryside of India where a lot of people were traveling at that time on foot. And they would befriend the travelers. And they would make 
makeshift campsites. And they'd be like, you know, they'd go up to a bunch of travelers like yourself and say, how you doing with the thuggies? You know, we got a little campsite over here. We're gonna be barbecuing, having a little drink, a little entertainment. I want you guys just come in and join us. You know, you leave off the next morning. Now, if you've been walking 70 miles that day, how many know that's a pretty good proposition? So they invite the thug, I mean, they, they would invite the travelers in and then put pillows out, barbecue, and, you know, give them drink, smoke, and all that, and they smoke back then, marijuana. And they would, they, would, they would invite them in, and then what happens after you start eating? After your second plate, you start getting sleepy, right? And then you sitting back there, these thugs sure is hospitable. And they would lay in there, and they would, they would, all of a sudden, the travelers would start falling asleep. And what do you think the thugs would do? They would rise up and slaughter them and give their bodies over to Kali. And then they believed that their harvest would be blessed, their livestock would be blessed, and everything else. But you know, one thing, and I'm going to be ending up short, one thing that caught my attention, though, was I found out they had another ritual. Because when I talk to these guys that kill, and I talk, I talk to a lot of killers, they'll tell me, you can't just wake up and kill nobody. They said, you can't do it. Your conscience will not let you wake up and kill somebody. They all tell me, they say, I need two things. They say, you give me drugs, and you give me music. Some say, I'll kill my mama. I'm a whole nother person. I just one guy that was telling me, I'm going to kill my grandmother. I said, why would you kill grandma? She's a Christian. I'm tired of Christian. <laughs> oh. And see, people don't understand the history about drugs. Everybody know about the word pharmacy, right? We're about to go deep here real quick. Word pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmika, which means sorcery. And y'all know what sorcery is, right? Sorcery is communicating with evil spirits. And what, what did God say? Don't do that, right? See, in ancient times, they would go before the tribe and they'd be like, y'all want some supernatural power? You want some supernatural knowledge, some supernatural revelation? They'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, well, you need some pharmacia. That's where our word pharmacy comes from, the Greek word pharmacia. They'd be like, well, how, how, how do we do that? They'd be like, they put out the opium, they put out the cocaine, they put out the different drugs. And they believe when they did that, they would open the portal to their soul. And what is your soul? Your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And they believe when you open up the portal to your soul, these spirits, the spirit would then come in and they would tantalize the body and make the body feel good. And why do you think that is? So they can get control over the control panel. Right? Your mind, your emotions, and your will. That's the real us, the soul. So that's what they believe in. And you know, the thugs had, 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 a, had a famous form of key. And what do you think that was? Marijuana. And when they smoked marijuana, they believed that the spirits of Kali would then come within them and tantalize them, make them feel light, you know, and make them feel good. Why do you think that was? That's why drug addiction is so addicting, because these spirits would come in and they tantalize the body so they can get control, because how I many you know Satan needs a body? Mm. Huh? We're the body of Christ, right? right? Who are we controlled by? The Holy Spirit. See, Satan also has a body. And how do we get into the presence of God? How do we get, you know, into the glory of God through praise and worship? That opens up the portal of our soul. All of a sudden, we start feeling light, right? All of a sudden, people get visions and revelations. People start getting healed, miracle signs and wonders. But when these spirits were coming to call it, all of a sudden, their conscience would start hardening. And all of a sudden, they'd be like, yeah, I can go out and do this killing. Let's go ahead and do this. That's why they always smoke weed before they do drive-by shootings. See, the drugs, okay, that, that, that was the portal to the soul. Other portals, certain types of tattooing, brings in, opens up a portal to the soul. The music, all types of things, and then closing, the one thing that I always leave, when, you know, when I go out and speak to young people, and I remember being on this one unit, and one thing thug mentality does is steals the self-respect. I'm gonna explain that. I remember being on this one unit where all day long we had rival gang members disrespecting each other, saying derogatory marks. I mean, all day long on this locked up unit. And I remember one time this, it got pretty quiet, but one guy was still kicking the door and just yelling and screaming. I'm like, bro, ain't nobody even saying nothing to you. Why are you just yelling? Everybody's asleep. He just looked at me and says, Johnson, I hate it when it's quiet. I'm like, why 
make when it's quiet? He said, when it's quiet, I think. I said, what do you think about? He said, I think about all the evil that I've done. He said, I think about all the women I violated, all the people I disappointed. And I said, well, and we started talking, and he, I knew he was in a gang. I'm like, well, why are you in a gang? Why'd you get in a gang? He said, man, it's all about respect. I said, now I stopped him right there. I said, well, okay. I said, we're going to prove that there. You said you were in a gang for respect. He said, yeah. I'm like, all right. I said, let me ask you something. I said, does anything you do as a gang member violate your conscience? And when I talk to these gang members, what do you think they say? All of them say, yes, it violates my conscience. Well, I said, well, how do you deal with them? I got smoke, I, I, you know, I get high. That's how they deal with it. Let me know drugs and alcohol brings temporary peace. Temporary peace. So I said, I said, okay. I said, well, you violate your conscience. I said, you violate your conscience. I said, would you say your conscience and your self-respect is one and the same? What do you mean by that? I'm like, if I can make you do something that you don't want to do, and pressure you to do something you don't want to do, did I make you violate your self-respect? I mean, y'all agree with that? I, I would make them violate your self-respect, right? Well, like, well, yeah. I'm like, well, hold on, let's go back. They said, you just told me you got in a game for respect. Well, yeah, that's right. So I made them say it. And I said, well, but at the same time, you said your activities as a gang member violate your self-respect. I said, something's not adding up. I said, how can you be in a game for respect when the activities in the game violate your own self-respect? I said, that's the reason why you're probably trying to get respect from somebody else, because you can't give it to yourself. I said, can you see now that you being in the game for respect is a lie? You see? Y'all get that revelation? So when we violate our conscience, we out there smoking weed, that violates their conscience. All these young people say smoking weed violates their conscience. Almost even the music you listen to, does that violate your conscience? Yeah. Stop disrespecting yourself. See, a real man lives a life according to their, and a real woman lives a life according to their God-given conscience. Y'all agree with that? Yeah. Say amen. 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 Okay, well, I'm about to end up right now, and uh, like I said, I, I, I have a, I have a, our ministry is thugexposed.org. We have some, you know, ministry vi videos that we give up for any type of uh, donation. Like I said, we, we go totally off donations and everything like that, but thank you for having me. God bless. Let's give it a round of applause.